Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn how you can apply filtering uh, an image collection. Uh, mostly when you use a satellite data, you deal with uh, an image collection. Uh, uh, for example, uh, if you're using a Landsat data, you are dealing with a global coverage, which is um, geographically large data set, and also a long time series, probably 40 years of data if you're dealing with Landsat data. So one of the uh, useful techniques in remote sensing is to apply filtering, uh, filtering an image collection to filter by date, to filter by a study region, and to filter by uh, image uh, property or metadata, uh, probably a cloud cover. So we're gonna um, uh, see some of these examples by using a Landsat 9 data. So let's get started. So let's just create a new code editor here. Um, so we'll get started. Um, let's create a title for this filtering image collection. And so the first thing is let's create our um, region of interest. Um, I'll create ROI, um, short form for region of interest. Um, I'll just use an example, a uh, lot long information or location that I use for this example, but you can change this if you want to. It's just providing a latitude and longitude information. And for this, I'll use an Earth Engine ob uh, object or a, an Earth Engine geometry feature to store my point location. That way I can use, uh, I, I can access it later. So I'll use EE geometry uh, and point. So that will store an Earth Engine um, point feature. And then I'll provide my um, information longitude and um, latitude and minus one. This is already pretty um, predetermined. Don't worry about this. You can change this for any location. All right. So the next thing is um, actually we're dealing with a Landsat um, on nine data set. So uh, as you already know, uh, you might know most satellite data products. Uh, the they store information as integers to save uh, storage space, right? So before you use the satellite data, mostly you need to apply scale factor, um, you know, multiplying by a given scale factor and also adding an offset value. Well, um, all of this information is provided um, to you by um, the satellite product provider. Um, so let's just um, create a function here. Um, to uh, create that scale factor multiplication. Uh, instead of doing it uh, for every image, we're gonna write a function that does for all of the image um, in the image collection, all right? Um, so function here, uh, so function, I'll name it apply scale factors. All right, and then I'll provide um, a bracket and just uh, input that's uh, a parameter that's gonna go to this function. I'll call it image. And then I'll create a curly bracket um, to um, pass my, my um, argument. So the first uh, argument or statement is um, I want, cause we're dealing with Landsat 9 data here. So we have uh, optical bands and we have thermal bands. So we're gonna use, um, we're gonna create a statement to uh, apply that scale factor for the optical bands first. So I'll use opti optical um, bands. So this is just a variable. You can name it differently if you want to, it doesn't matter. And I'll um, pass my image here, which I've already created. And I wanna select the, um, surface reflectance bands for the optical um, bands. So I'll say SRB dot, which uh, will call all of the uh, surface reflectance or optical bands. And then I'll multiply, uh, I'll create a multiply function, which is an already uh, Earth Engine built-in. And then I'll provide this. This is already uh, on, if you go to the uh, Landsat 9 image collection um, description, you, you should find um, this um, 
scale factor values. So I'm just uh, taking it from the Earth engine property and then I'll call statements. So now I have um, my uh, first argument is just to do a conversion for the optical bands. Let's do the, the thermal bands. Thermal bands. And then I'll do the same, but for the thermal bands, instead of SR, ST, that's just for the thermal bands, okay? And then, um, and then the scale factor is different, so I'm gonna replace this again. So it's zero point, I'm just copying it from the Earth Engine, Landsat 9 description here. And then the offset value is here. Actually, the reason why it's um, it's showing me some error in my syntax is I didn't add that at um, function. Okay, should be good now. And then the the next thing is just what do I want to return? So I want to return um, the image, but um, with the already calculated optical bands, the uh, rescaled bands. So uh, the first one is optical bands. So I want to add this, add bands, add bands function will add the, the new bands that you have calculated. Um, and let's do the other one, add bands. So you'll add the band. And then um, the next one is I'll add the thermal rescaled bands. Okay. And um, okay, and then I'll close my return statement here, and this should be good. So this function, what it does is just if for any image collection, um, it will go through the image collection, and for each image or each optical band, it will uh, apply the first rescale factor, and for each thermal band, uh, it will apply the scale factor and adds the 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 processed rescaled bands here into the image collection. Perfect. All right, so the next step is to actually um, um, get the Landsat data. Before that, let's just go to Earth Engine um, and, uh, you know, data set here. You can go to Landsat here and then um, Landsat 9. We're using the Landsat 9 here. So I'll use surface reflectance. Um, so as I mentioned here, that's where you can get the um, surface reflectance um, scale factor and offset values here. Um, th that's what I was mentioning earlier. All right, so, um, and we can copy this um, image collection here, ID, and so I'll create a variable, L9 here. Uh, I'll just say it just as a variable. And EE, actually, I'll just copy paste that um, as I uh, um, get it from the Landsat, the Earth Engine Data Catalog Landsat um, page, Landsat 9 page. So, what I do here is um, so I'm just calling this image collection, I'm not doing anything. What I need to do is just simply apply this function, uh, just applying, converting the data. Um, the, the Landsat bands to uh, a rescaled um, band. So instead of an integer, we'll convert them to a floating. So map apply this function here. That's what I'm doing here. Uh, I think that's it. And then, so what I'm doing here is just, um, I'm gonna access all the entire Landsat 9 collection. So I'm gonna print, so I didn't do any filter, mind you. So we haven't done any filtering yet. So we're gonna do uh, shortly. So L9, which is, I'm passing this um, uh, entire image collection, which is a global, uh, you know, coverage and uh, time series um, since the launch of Landsat 9. So I'll just uh, type in size, which will tell me the total number of images within in this image collection. Let's print that. Let's execute that code here by clicking run. You can see Earth Engine is uh, running this competition on uh, behind the scene. So there are you know tens of thousands of computers running in parallel to do this um, on the cloud. And then so now I have 
uh, the total number of uh, images um, within this image collection, uh, the landside collection to image um, collection is 336,000 images. That's that's huge. 336,362 uh, images. All right. So that's the beauty of you know if if you want to use this um, for your analysis, research analysis, or any project, if you want to use a landside data, you want to filter it because um, it's really hard to use uh, you know this um, you know almost 300,000 uh, images. So in, instead of using that, you just apply filtering and then you. Um, Kind of reduce the number of images that you're dealing with only focusing for your study side so what we're gonna do next is instead of do, you know using all of this we'll apply different filters so the first filter we're using is um so we're gonna use cloud filter okay so let's just um let's see um so i'm gonna create a, a variable filtered um and so i'll call this L9, which is the entire Landsat 9 image collection. And then I'll create a filter metadata. So filter metadata um, helps you to filter uh, based on metadata information in the image property. So filter metadata. Uh, there's some typo here, that's why. Okay, so if it's turning into um, Kind of purple. It's showing that the the there's no you know type typo error or whatnot. So this is just telling you it's an Earth Engine built-in function. Um, for example, if I do here, it's just turn into um, you know a black color, which is something wrong. It's it's not an Earth Engine function. Now it's an Earth Engine function. So that's one of the tips to make sure that your your syntax is properly written. Okay, so the next one is cloud cover. So we're gonna use um, some metadata metadata information that's stored in the Landsat product. So it's existing in the Landsat product. Um, so we're gonna use cloud cover. All right, so cloud cover. We're gonna use cloud cover. And what's um, our parameter? So we need to. Um, do some uh, our operations. So what we need is less than. Um, let's just uh, change the caps here. All right, and then less than some percentage. So as you know, cloud cover is stored in percent percentage from zero to hundred percent, right? So what we're doing here is, um, you know, 100% cloud contamination is really a bad pick, you know, image with lots of pixels contaminated. 1% um, or zero is almost cloud free image. So we wanna use, you know, 10, 10% cloud contamination. So I wanna use only, uh, so I'm gonna, what, what this does is, is that instead of 336,000 images, it's gonna pick, um, select only um, um, Landsat image with cloud contamination uh, less than 10%. So that's gonna filter the image a significant amount. So the next filter we're gonna apply is filter um, date. We're gonna apply filter date. In addition to that, it's gonna um, we're gonna use the Earth Engine uh, built-in filter filter um, date. So you're gonna provide a specific timestamp, uh, right? Uh, specific timestamp that way <clears throat> you're gonna um, select um, you don't need like four or five years of data you just only need for example if your uh, study is um, um, in if your project uh, needs you know a timestamp uh, data analysis for the year 2022 then you're gonna use only that years data right you don't need the other years so here the, how the uh, filter date works is that you need to provide the start day month year and also the end day month year so we're gonna provide that as a text information for example here the year is 2022 and the uh, January 1st and let's that's the start date and uh, our other uh, 
second filter parameters, it needs also the end date. Uh, so let's see uh, January, February, March. Let's see 2020 to March. There are three, there are one. All right, so that's, um, there's some typo here. Let's just fix that. Um, EE filter, okay, there should be only one bracket here and that should be good, all right? Okay, so um, again, to, to uh, reiterate, we have done cloud uh, filter method using metadata. We have done um, temporal filter using date. Uh, let's do another filter, which is um, a special filter. Uh, let's provide our uh, region of interest or study area um, filter bounds and then ROI. So where is ROI? We have created a point here, right? So we're going to pass that ROI here. So instead of a global coverage, it's going to only um, provide us, um, you know, image uh, within the Landsat image collection. Uh, overlaying this study area. So we've done, you know, metadata filter, uh, temporal filter, and spatial filter, all right? So before we had um, the entire Landsat image collection is 336,362. Now it should be only a few image, probably one, depending on. Um, so let's see. Let's apply the same print um, size information to know the total number of images here. So print <coughs> instead of L9, we'll be using the filtered, we'll pass here the filtered um, image to see what the total size is, right? So let's just go ahead and execute that. All right, excellent. So we only have one image. So what the filtered did is just reduced all of the, you know, the other image that you're not interested in your research or analysis and reduce them into one single image. So that's how you can apply um, a filtering when you're using, uh, this is an example for Landsat, but you can use it for, you know, Sentinel or Modis or any other um, satellite product to kind of um, reduce the total number of image in terms of geographic coverage, also temporal timestamp. Uh, to um, kind of um, um, prepare um, for your 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 uh, digital image processing or analysis.